Welcome to the Bentley Success Factors webinar series. This one today is on SolVision applications to slope stability modeling of open pits. And my name is Murray Fredland. I'm happy to be presenting to you here today. What we'd like to go over today is talk about the application in the mining industry of open pit slope stability. We'll look at some of the challenges of this particular application, what solutions we feel that uh, the SolarVision software provides in this environment, and talk a little bit about our integrated geotechnical work workflow, look at open pit analysis, what are features in the software that are relevant to this type of analysis and that set it apart, and then we'll do a brief software demo at the end of this uh, webinar. So the Soil Vision software uh, applies in a lot of different industry areas, and some of these industry areas are shown on this slide here in terms of there's mining, dams and levees, landslide risk analysis, reinforced walls and slopes, or infrastructure. But we really want to focus in on the mining application. And in particular, today we're going to look at uh, the open pit slope stability analysis issue and how to analyze open pit slope stability. And <clears throat> some of the historical challenges that we can go over are that we have existing open pit facilities that have been in operation for decades. Uh, there's a pres pressure industry-wide to make them larger and deeper to extend their useful lifetime. And really what pushes back against that is a slope stability issue. Uh, the profits go up as you go larger and deeper, but you have to balance that with uh, related slope stability issues of your side, your pit uh, sidewalls. Uh, traditionally, 2D limit equilibrium models have been run to analyze slope stability. Uh, however, 2D analysis uh, is not ideal in the case of a very conical and three-dimensional geometry that is present in most open pits. And uh, 3D analysis, uh, finite element techniques, the analysis times and the model setup times get quite long and uh, it's challenging to get the turnaround rate on doing a modeling cycle to keep up with excavation rates. So we're gonna look at some of these challenges and see what we can do. I feel that uh, some of the Limitations of 2D analysis can be overcome through a 3D limit equilibrium analysis of a pit wall stability using SV slope 3D. And the benefits of this new type of analysis that you can extend the life of existing facilities through steepening of pit sidewalls based on the 3D analysis. You can more rigorously accurate and accurately calculate the factor of safety in a three-dimensional, true three-dimensional nature. You can represent complex geostrata uh, you can numerically model faults and weak fracture of planes and uh, as well as anisotropy and rock uh, weak strength bedding planes that are of varying angles. And um, there's also s slope stabilization reinforcing measures uh, when they're used can be modeled as well. So in order to present the solution of uh, what we have developed within SV Slope, really, uh, Soil Vision has tried to integrate the geotechnical workflow, and we've done this through. There's a lot of different data sources that have to come together for modeling. In uh, even an open pit scenario, you have top topology that may come in from lidar. Uh, surveys, uh, satellite data, whatever. There's a lot of different data sources that can come in. Uh, those all have to be brought in for topology. Then you have very complex subsurface models that are built based on uh, borehole information. And must those must be brought into your geostrata in some method. Then there's faults and weak planes and all kinds of uh, structural anomalies that have to be brought into the model. And generally how we handle this in the context of the SolarVision software is that it, it's brought into a 3D conceptual modeling program called SV Designer, which really just focuses on the geometry of building the problem at hand. 
you're looking at building the site and the concept of site, the site in 3D and then really doing the analysis in 2D or 3D becomes a subset of that type of, uh, that type of analysis. So we'll look at how that plays out in the context of open pit modeling. So traditional modeling is that you get a profile and you focus on that profile. Really what we're looking at here is the concept of building the 3D site and your complete site. So if you've got an open pit, building the whole 3D open pit and all substrata and all faulting into a 3D concept of the site and then looking at analysis in 2D or 3D as a second stage. And you can do 2D or 3D groundwater analysis or 2D, 3D slope stability analysis and really that's up to the professional judgment of the engineer working on the project. So the software is there to, to support this type of improved workflow where we can easily go back and, and analyze at any slice in 2D or 3D or we have uh, more, a more free-flowing and more generic type of analysis that we can be uh, exposed to at the site. So modeling of open pits in particular represents a lot of complexity. When we first uh, entered into this market area, we looked at some of the examples that people were trying to model and we realized why there are difficulties, is there are a lot of inherent complexities with modeling open pits. And uh, the software required an R&D effort to identify which areas uh, needed to be improved in the practical modeling of open pit slopes and therefore we um, we started with a little bit of an R&D process and moved through to implementing features in close conjunction with um, uh, people specializing in rock mechanics and mining engineering particularly to adapt the software to suit their needs. So. We engaged with leading consulting, engineering consulting firms on a global scale and developed, uh, required a lot of development of relevant features and we aligned the development as best we could with industry needs and where practical analysis was being performed. And we added the features with the idea of being able to support a fairly quick turnaround cycle on producing an open pit numerical model that gave a better representation of slope stability uh, quickly. So uh, really some of the features, a summation of them is is here. We, we improved the 3D conceptual modeling. In other words, you could represent the 3D aspects of the site in a more accurate fashion. Um, that improved, that, that improvement, like just improving the ability to handle meshes instead of grids, for example, that made a fairly significant difference on slope stability and the surface geometries which do tend to affect slope stability. We added a feature called multiplane analysis because the spatial variation of uh, slopes uh, it varies over the surface area of an open pit and often we tend to analyze and pick which area we think is the most um, the weakest and needs analysis. However, what multiplane analysis does is it allows you as an engineer to sweep the analysis around a structure and perform many slope stability analyses and then contour the results over the top surface. Uh, we also implemented material volume meshes to handle complex surface geometry and, and subsurface geometry rather. Um, a lot of times in modeling of open pits there are complex ore bodies that really are represented with a 3D mesh that's an enclosed volume and they're not they don't subscribe really to that surface and layer approach so we added a, an object called material volume meshes to allow more fluid modeling of subsurface geometry. Then there was advanced trial slip surface searching and optimization to select non-ellipsoidal type of slip surfaces. Uh, there was also advanced options for combining slip surface searching with um, block models and ellipsoids and a hybrid of, of geometries and shapes and anomalies. 
and accounting for faults and weak surfaces in your searching algorithm was, was a big thing as well. Uh, we also worked with Ken Mercer out of Australia and implemented his ALM 1 to 4 anisotropic linear models in the software to model rock properties and handle an anisotropy. But once we implemented the strength models, then you have uh, a related issue of the how do you define what the bedding plane is at any one point in the model. And so implementing these advanced anisotropic models also required implementation of a methodology for modeling of bedding planes. And that was uh, a big improvement to the software. As well as we worked constantly with computer science experts to speed up the computations since we're doing uh, analysis over very large areas in the model. And uh, all that came together into quite a nice package. Um, in terms of conceptual modeling, it was handled largely by our SV Designer mod module. And what this allows is much faster model creation. And what I'll say is that we, in talking to our customers, a lot of times what we found is that uh, many geotech f consulting firms in this area stall on just handling the geometry because it gets so complicated in especially in a 3D open pit type of scenario. So we worked with them in honing our SV Designer package and what it does is it speeds the ability to make 3D models and it gives you at your fingertips all the tools needed for quick surface intersections so that all surfaces and fault planes and everything um, pinch out at uh, well-defined areas and it makes for a very conducive model to model numerically. And uh, really it allows you to reduce your time input to making and building these complex 3D models by an order of magnitude. So it's SV Designer, it's uh, just some of the features. It's made to be very easy to use by a geotech engineer. It does construction sequences, surface cuts, excavation, in intersection of surfaces. It has an advanced uh, smoothing and interpolation algorithms such as Krigging. You can drape surface images over your, over your model. Uh, you can create very stunning client visuals. And uh, there's a whole host of features that you can do for related to modeling. Uh, an example of this is fixing intersecting geometry. For example, on the figures on your right, what you can see is placing a surface that represents a nicely engineered earth dam structure in a valley that's very irregular. And the problem is, is that the irregular topology is represented by a detailed mesh and then the nicely engineered structure only needs a few triangles to represent it. Uh, but it cuts into the surface geometry on all sides and all of those intersection points need to be represented. So what you can do is just right click on both objects, the, the earth dam surface and the topology and tell the software to intersect them and what it does is it finds intersection points that are common on both surfaces and, and integrates the objects into each other. So very easy to do. And such functions have a lot of options. You can, if you have three overlapping surfaces, like as shown in the right, you can choose how you want to intersect them. I mean, do you want them to follow a clipping surface up and over, or do you want to carve out a certain surface from another one and create a void space? Or there's all kinds of functions in the software to handle all these different type of intersections of surfaces. I mean, we're just showing you simple two-dimensional representations here, but complex three-dimensional surfaces can be modeled with this as well. Uh, you can merge existing surfaces into new surfaces, and on the right you'll just see different combinations of overlapping surfaces, and then there's judgment that's required on how these objects pinch out next to each other, and you can merge them onto a new surface, or you can resolve overlaps is other functions that you can do that show how you resolve overlaps between surfaces such that your geometry doesn't overlap. And that was one of the more common things that we found uh, stymied modeling efforts in the early days is having 
surface geometry that doesn't align or overlaps and then it fails your meshing algorithms and creates a lot of troubles in building models. If everything pinches out and everything is well defined, then there is often very little problem in building three-dimensional models. So multiplane analysis was another feature that we implemented such that um, we could provide a better representation of the stability at a site. And uh, what it does is it quickly allows the user to specify a series of planes around a 3D topology and really then the uh, 2D or 3D limit equilibrium analysis method analyzes at each of these plane locations and then the results are contoured onto the top surface. So you can have very complex 3D geostrata can be analyzed and it's if you analyze it in 2D it's sliced in 2D so what you can do is replicate how an analysis was traditionally done with a 2D series of slices around a model, plot those results and then sweep a full three-dimensional analysis around a model and compare the results, contour the results. And on the right hand side you see a, an example open pit where the analysis have been swept, has been swept around an open pit. You can see the critical slip surface and the critical slip surface is exploded out of the slope to just give you a visual effect of the volume of earth that um, is identified as the critical uh, slip. Um, just shows some of the uh, more of the example of the output. You can see where the 3D failures uh, where the critical slip surfaces were. You can overlay aerial odor um, photo maps on the model to give it uh, perspective on where you are and as well parallel processing of solutions has been implemented in order to cut down on analysis time because analysis time when you're doing so many thousands or hundreds of thousands of 3D slip surfaces can take a little bit of time but it's generally not a lot I mean analysis time even in in these complex scenarios typically would range up to you know from uh, an hour or two up to a day or two uh, for a very complex site with lots of trials. Um, one of the <coughs> issues that we had as well is that uh, 3D volumes were represented in mining software and mining resource software as in fully enclosed volume meshes and uh, these volume meshes were overlain on top of the existing model and, and uh, the interest was is retaining and modeling these structures as is. And at the time when we started this, the software only supported the traditional layer cake type of building paradigm where you build up your, your strata in surfaces like a layered cake. However, these, uh, these 3D volumes can cut through multiple layers or extend vertically and uh, there's, uh, modeling them was historically quite challenging. So we implemented a new material uh, volume mesh object that represents objects, these volume materials, and they can be input independently of a layer cake and the precedence of how they override the surface and layers can be specified in the software. So it's really quite flexible and convenient on how you define your model and it allows a lot of liberty for defining uh, very irregular objects that intersect into your model. And uh, so every MVM represents one distinct volume of material. You can have MVMs that overlap with each other and then you can define a priority of which material is, uh, takes precedence if two MVMs overlap. And so there's, there's comprehensive support for these objects in the software and they work uh, very well. Uh, there's also, it should be mentioned a little bit, that um, there's, there's a lot of technology that goes into searching for uh, a 2D and a 3D, especially a three-dimensional slip surface. Most of the historical searching methods have been focused on two-dimensional slip surface surfaces in software. However, now you're looking at f not only fully irregular uh, 3D searching, but then different uh, base object shapes. So really, 
There is, you can uh, include searching with ellipsoids or block models or uh, including weak planes and get bedding guides. Uh, then overlaying on top of that you have uh, a variety of searching methods. Your classic grid and tangent can be done in 3D. You can do entry and exit in 2D or 3D. You can do moving wedges or fully specified slip surfaces or more automated searching methods such as the cuckoo search or the slope search. And all of these methods work in conjunction, which is very important, with um, any slip direction. So you can find the slip direction. And as well, they are cognizant of what weak planes you've defined in the model. And you can have multiple weak planes in the model. And what happens is you can set up searching and use your base type of ellipsoid. And then it searches for an ellipsoid. And then it searches, does this ellipsoid intersect any weak planes or any bedding guides? And can I find a more optimal slip surface by following one of these um, weak planes or bedding guides to find a lower factor safety. So there's a very advanced slip surface searching algorithms in the software for this. So this is an example of an uh, interesting bullnose type of structure that was analyzed in the software. You can see the columns and the grid and the, the, the geometry of this object, this bullnose, made it difficult to analyze in 2D. And so uh, a combination of uh, ellipsoid slip surfaces and wedges was defined um, with known fault planes and uh, there was a lot of searching for uh, different slip directions. There was over 12,000 trial slip surfaces tried and you can see a very nice graph in terms of how you modified the slip direction. At some point when you modify sl slip direction, you should get a, a minimized function that's uh, roughly the shape of a U, the letter U, at the, at the lowest point that defines your optimal slip direction. And you can see that being developed here, and uh, there was about a 33% increase in the factor safety over 2D uh, in the 3D generated factor safety, which allowed the, the mining company a little more confidence, because here the 2D model said this uh, particular slope should fail, but they knew it it uh, obviously wouldn't because it was still standing. And so the 3D model was able to uh, do a more rigorous analysis of the slope and explain um, in more detail why the slope is still standing. Um, another significant feature that's worth merit and, and mentioning is the optimization of your slip surface. And uh, really how optimization works is it, it finds an ellipsoidal slip surface and then it will find your optimal non-ellipsoidal shape with the lowest factor safety by adjusting your three-dimensional geometry. And it's very useful for models with heterogeneous material layers and uh, it's, it's a very comprehensive method that works well for determining and tweaking your, your final slip surface. There's also, uh, worthy of mention, is the implementation of faults and weak surfaces. Um, you can model dikes, cleavage, tension joints, and shear joints defined by wedges or weak surfaces in the software. And you can have more than one. You can have any number of them that combine and overlap each other. And that all can be defined in the software. And um, therefore, you're, you're getting a little closer to a digital twin or uh, modeling the reality of the situation, which is what we're pushing for here at Bentley. Um, so how it's just, this is going through how it's modeled, really what we do is we search for um, a, a really the combined effect of the ellipsoid and following a fault or a slip surfaces. So faults can truncate ellipsoidal slip surfaces and uh, new factor safety can be calculated depending upon the fault. And it's worth noting that all the faults in a weak planes can be given specific um, strength properties and have those assigned to them so they behave differently than the surrounding material. And so that's a very advanced feature. Um, in terms of anisotropic rock strength, uh, the ALM linear models 1 to 4 are available in the software. And uh, in ALM4 is particularly flexible. It really represents a custom definition of the 
relationship between the the angle and the shear strength of the material and so it allows for very complex stress models to be or strength models to be defined in the software and then you have the related issue of how do you define the bedding plane so what we have implemented is a separate object called a bedding guide and what it is is a three-dimensional surface that uh, and most of these surfaces are roughly parallel to each other they don't have to be but they, they uh, usually are and you, the user can define these weak planes and you're on the example on your left you're seeing the the bedding planes which formerly rose above the ground now they've been excavated below the ground but they're defined and uh, what they do is they define the direction of anisotropy for the ALM 1 to 4 models. So if the slip direction follows a bedding plane well, it uh, determines a lower factor safety and the effect of the weakened anisotropic direction is accounted for in the software analysis. So a very nice advanced feature. Uh, we've also uh, spent a lot of time and research in speeding the computation methods for analyzing models and the solution is highly parallelized and it is spread upon uh, across many CPUs and therefore you get uh, the speediest analysis possible in the software even with the MPA methods. So thank you for your attention in the PowerPoint display now I'd like to break and uh, go through a little bit of a software demonstration showing typical models that you would see in an open pit analysis scenario.